cool. What's up, people? It's Devin here with Make Anything. And a few months ago, uh, this company called Glisteny sent me these really cool LED light strips. They are two meters long, waterproof. They've got 3M adhesive on the back. And they just wanted to see if I could do a cool project with it. And I'm like, yeah, I could totally do tons of cool stuff with this. I actually asked you guys for suggestions of what I could do with this strip. And I got tons of cool responses. And I'm using none of them. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I do have two of these. So my next project involving these LED light strips will probably be one of your suggestions. But I came up with my own idea that's pretty simple, but also something I really wanted to do. And that is just to make a giant light stick for long exposure photography. If you guys aren't familiar with the idea of light painting, it's basically just when you have a camera and you leave the shutter open for a couple seconds while you run around with a light. And then the trail that that light follows will show up in the photograph as just one long continuous thing. So I thought it would be super cool to make a huge two meter long stick, the whole length of this LED strip, and then I can run around and create giant walls of light. So that's what I'm gonna share with you guys today. It is the light stick, the light wall, whatever you wanna call it. It's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and look at what I did. So I started with this long piece of oak wood that I just had lying around. It was pretty much the perfect size already, I just needed to cut it a little bit shorter. My first thought was to use a PVC pipe, but that should really be my last thought because PVC is awful for the environment, plus it would be too flexible. So wood was a really good choice for this. Although there were some knots that I wanted to fill in, so I used some Bondo, mixed that together, and filled up any gaps. That would be unsightly. It's a pretty unnecessary step because this is going to be used in the dark anyways, but I don't know, that's just me. <laughs> so I just laid out the LED strip to see how long it would be, and I marked where my hand would be so that I could carve myself a grip. I also marked in between each knuckle so that I could make it kind of uh, conformed to my hand. I took this large metal file and just started working away at each of the knuckles. I'm using the rounded side of the file, which is pretty ideal since I want this rounded contour for my fingers. I rounded the other side as well and then sanded everything down so it would be nice and smooth. I used the same file to grind down that Bondo once it was dry. And you just have to make sure that the teeth don't get filled up with gunk. I used a metal brush to clean them out. That Bondo dust is pretty bad for your lungs, so be sure to at least wear a dust mask. And once I was done grinding that down, I went ahead and sanded the entire pole. So here's the battery pack for the LED strip. And this product comes with both a battery pack and a USB cable, but I want it to be portable, so I'm going to use this pack. The pack is also nice because it has an on-off switch, which the USB cable doesn't. So I figured I would just have the battery pack butt up against the bottom of the stick like this. So all I really have to do is print a connector that fits both of these parts. So I'm pretty much done with the stick here. All I have to do now is paint it black so that it'll definitely not show up in any of the photos. But before we do that, we're going to use my calipers to measure the length, width, and depth of the end here so that I know how to make the end cap for this part. So to paint this thing, I'm using some black oil-based paint. But really, for a project like this, just about any black paint is fine. It's just what I had lying around. The problem with this oil-based paint is that it takes a really long time to dry. So as eager as I was to get everything painted, it was impossible to cover the entire thing without first waiting for some of it to dry. But I managed to paint most of it, just those little patches where the clamps are attached will have to be painted the next day. And because of that, I do want to save my paintbrush, which I can do by just wrapping it in a plastic bag and sticking it in the fridge to get those parts tomorrow. 
But while that's drying out, we're going to get into SOLIDWORKS and design that end cap. I'm going to start out by drawing a rectangle based on those measurements I took of the wooden stick. I'll plug in the width and the height, plus a little bit of tolerance to make sure that my part will slip on. So I'm actually going to do an outward shell of this shape that I make, and that's why I'm creating a block rather than a hollow part to fit the stick into. You'll see what I mean in just a few steps once I get to that outward shell. But for now, I'm putting in the dimensions of that wooden stick and extruding it by the depth that I also measured. Then on the back of that, I'm gonna draw another rectangle based on the dimensions of the battery pack. I'll plug those measurements in and extrude it backwards. And now I'm gonna do that outward shell I was talking about. I'll just click the shell function up here. I'll select the two faces that I wanna to connect to my different components. Then I'll tick this box that says shell outward and I'll also change this wall thickness to 3 millimeters, so it's a bit more sturdy. When I hit OK, you'll see that it builds a wall using my original shape as the internal dimensions for this part. Next, I did a sketch on this internal wall so that I could separate the two parts. I thought I might have to use epoxy to get this end cap stuck to the wood, so I ended up making that a solid wall. That would just give me a surface to stick the glue to without messing with the battery end of things. I'll do a chamfer on all the edges, and I'll throw my logo on there as well. But I'm just gonna speed through that step since I've done it for several of my projects. After that, I'll throw some chamfers and fillets on the inside edges, that way things slip together a little easier. And I thought maybe I should build a little tab to apply pressure to the battery pack to make sure it's held in place. So to do that, I started by creating two slots that are nearly the length of the entire bottom of this battery holder. And I'll cut those out to create this panel in the center, which will now be able to flex a little more. Next, I'll draw on the right plane, which cuts right through the middle of this piece. Then I'm gonna create this shape to cut out from that center panel, which will make it more thin, and that'll help it be more flexible. And the reason I want that to be flexible is because I'm gonna extrude this bump that's going to be making contact with that battery pack and the battery pack is going to basically flex it out of the way creating some tension. I'll just fill it that out to make it nice and smooth and that should allow the battery pack to just slide in and stay in place. Alright and that's it for this part so I'm going to go ahead and send that to my printer and I printed it out in this nice vertigo gray which will match the dark theme of my project. So that tab was indeed sturdy, but flexible, and there was a little bit of sagging on that bridge, but it ended up being a nice fit just as I had hoped. Just tight enough to hold everything in place, but also easy enough to remove. The other end that connects to the wood was even better than I expected. It was such a tight fit that I didn't even have to glue it in place. It just held on its own. I checked the placement of my LED strip once again, just to make sure that I have everything in the right position. Then I'm going to strip the tape as I stick the strip to the stick. Wow, I end up giving myself a lot of tongue twisters in these voiceovers, don't I? That's a pretty good one, though. I stick the strip to the stick with strip. I stick... I strip the tape off the strip to stick the strip on the stick. <laughs> Alright, where were we? So once I had that stuck down, I noticed that this little controller at the end doesn't have an adhesive on it and I was worried that it might bend and ruin that connection. So I used this VHB tape, also from 3M, and cut out a little section to stick that down as well. It was that easy, so I'm gonna stick everything together, hit that switch, and ladies and gentlemen, we have a working light stick. And the little controller on the end here has a lot of different options for changing the color, the speed, and the mode. So as you can see, there's a few different modes flashing, fading, and scrolling through all the different colors. I'll admit, I was kind of excited. Wow! Wow! Yeah, this is gonna be insane. So here's what I look like taking the photo in the first place, but with a long exposure, it turns out a little more like this. Well, this is just a video effect, but here are some photos straight from my camera with no post-processing whatsoever. On top of creating these really cool light trails, you can turn the LED stick away from the camera and just light the environment in cool ways as well. 
my friend Kelly and I went out to a neighborhood park and took these really cool photos. She's a great photographer, and she also has a much better camera than I do. All right guys, there you have it, my giant light stick. It's huge, it's awesome. If you still have other suggestions as to what I should do with this second strip of LEDs, go ahead and leave it in the comments and I will definitely consider all the options. I definitely plan to use this light stick for a few photography projects. The photos came out super cool so far and there's probably a lot more that I can do with it. So if you want to see more of those photos, you can uh, follow me on Instagram. Uh, my account is at da -da -da -a -vin -a -vin. Just like it's written down there. Okay, that's it. Until next time, I'm Devin. This is Make Anything. Don't forget to stay inspired. Whoosh.